offices to be voted on one ballot, two selectmen for three years, two gas and electric commissioners for three years, two school committee members for three years, one assessor for three years, two finance committee members for three years, one planning board member for five years, two park commissioners, one for three years, and one for an unexpired term to 2014, two housing authority members, one for five years, and one for an unexpired term to 2016, given under our hands at Middleborough this 25th day of March 2013. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Mm -hmm. Next item is vote to sign the April 30th, 2013 special primary warrant. I'll read this. Let me do it. Yeah, that'll be great. Thank you, Alan. Warrant for special state primary, April 30th, 2013. Plymouth, South Shore, uh, to either of the constables of, to either of the constables of, of the town of Middleborough. Greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said town who are qualified to vote in the special state primary to vote at the polling places listed below. Precinct 1, Oak Point Clubhouse, 202 Oak Point Drive. Precinct 2, 4, and 6, Middleborough High School Gymnasium, 71 East Grove Street, Route 28. Precinct 3, South Middleborough Fire Station, 566 Wayham Street, Route 28. Precinct 5, Leonard E. Simmons Senior Multi-Service multi Center at 558 Plymouth Street. On Tuesday, April 30th, 2013, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose. To cast their votes in the special state primary for the candidates of the political parties for the following office. Senator in Congress for this Commonwealth. Hereof fail not and make return of this warrant with your doings thereon at the time and place of said voting. Given, un given under our hands this 25th day of March 2013. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, just one uh, quick comment. Sure. Listen, for all you people who keep complaining on Facebook about everything, this is your opportunity to get out there and actually make a difference. Get out and vote. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Next item is vote election officer appointments for 2013 and board of registrars appointment. Um, I don't believe I have to read all these names there before us. Do I need to read them all? <coughs> You can just say as presented and I can attach it to them. As presented. <laughs> so moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Next item is vote to approve amendments to the 2010 Community Development Block Grant. Um, I think you have a handout uh, that was given to us this evening. Um, basically, the uh, amendment is an extension of time uh, for the uh, 2010 Community Development Block Grant uh, to allow um, the further use of funds for uh, rehab of housing and to perform a survey, you know, a blight and slum survey. Is anyone here? Jane here? No. Hmm? Um, not. So we have some funds left over. We need a longer period of time to expend the funds. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. McKinnon. Well, we were going to vote on an amendment, but it, our amendment isn't listed here. No, it's not listed. It, it was a did change. You, did you take it out today? This was supposed to be, she, she found out late that what she was asking for was an extension, not an amendment. And then, is she coming back for an amendment at later, or can we do both? Poss possibly. Possibly. Yeah, well, it wasn't ready as of Friday. Okay. 
So it was going to be it was going to be passed over, and then today something else came up, so she wanted to keep the slide. Okay. All set. Yep. Anyone else have any we comments? We need to put the date in there. Motion 913, uh, 930, 2013. On the top of the second page. The requested extension. That's fine. The motion should contain the date September extended to September 30th, 2013. Who made that motion? I want to amend that motion to the extent to include, include the, the ex date. Re requested extension date of 9-30-2013. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any additional comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. The next item and last item under new business is vote to approve Stantex revised scope of work and cost estimate for the Route 44 cross street site. We talked about this last week. This is a new well site uh, and uh, there's some additional work that needs to be done on that site. There's about $55,000 left um, and what they need to do is redo the testing. They need a pump. About a hundred, was it a hundred thousand gallons of water? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hundred thousand gallons. Okay, I screwed this all up. It's okay. Um, <laughs> no, I'm having a real problem with this Um And uh, they're asking us to uh, to grant approval um, to uh, complete this work. Do we know where we're going to get the money for this? Uh, this is there's fifty five thousand dollars left. This will come out of the water reserve account. This is uh, well development, so okay. uh, it'll come out basically the rate payers pay for this. Okay. Okay. It's an enterprise fund, isn't it? Hmm. Isn't there a water enterprise fund? Yes, there is. That's what I meant. The rate payers, right? Yeah. Any other discussion? No. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Okay. Now, how do I I'm all screwed up here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah, all right. There you go. Nope. Okay. Only got a few left out. Okay, I'll screw around with that. Yeah, you screw around with that. I broke it. <laughs> uh, we're down to hearings and uh, meetings. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? What are you? What are you? The black hole of computers, or what? Title five inspection. Right? I'll be right with you. Hang on. Well, we have to go for another three minutes before we can start that hearing. So you ought to be able to. I, I think I'll take up the entire three minutes trying to find this damn thing. No, no, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to lick it. There we go. Yeah. Boy. I have one more minute. I can't even read that. Can you read that? Look at that. Do you want me to read it out? No. There we go. That's the right one? Yeah. Yes. You're right. It's scheduled for 725, and it's 725. Hey. A hearing will be held by the Board of Selectmen on Monday, March 25th, 2013, at 7.25 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, located at 10 Nickerson Ave, Middleborough, Mass., for the purpose of discussing application made by 58 East Grove Street, Inc., doing business as the Boston Tavern for an alteration of premises, all alcohol, beverage, restaurant, liquor license, property located at 58 East Grove Street, Middleborough, Mass. Assessors Map 58, Lot 5557, 
Middleborough, Mass. Anyone desiring to be heard on this matter should appear at the time and place designated. The meeting is now open. The hearing is open. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Good I'm evening. Dennis Barbado, one of the owners of Boston Tavern, and is my partner, Peter Morrissey. We're here to request an alteration to the uh, premise and liquor license. Uh, we have changed the, um, uh, the one of the dining areas, uh, which has a hundred is approved for a hundred seats, and we're going to put a thirty seat bar into it. Uh, the overall layout of the restaurants in uh, the uh, building has not been altered. The uh, physical building is approved for three hundred and fifty seats, and we're staying within that area. Okay. Uh, we have a letter here uh, from our building inspector. It said he's reviewed the application for any alteration of license premises submitted. Uh, and he doesn't have any issues and he would support the application. Uh, we also have a memo from the uh, Board of Health, um, the health inspector. The above property will require a final inspection by the health department for a food permit, but at this time the health department does not have any concerns or objections in granting the alteration premises all alcohol uh, beverage restaurant liquor license. Um, and the Conservation Commission, the only concern they had was the gazebo out back. I, I, and if any additional work is going to be done on that gazebo, you need to go before the commission. And if it's completed, uh, she wants you to uh, to uh, file a request for certificate of completion. Yes, I understand. I spoke with her today, and uh, Dave Fisher and his attorney is going to uh, finish the, the work that the, was supposed to be done at the closing. And in, in regards to altering the gazebo, we're, we have no plans for the gazebo. Okay. Any board member have any questions? No. No. Anybody in the audience have any questions? With that, I'm going to close the hearing. Hearing is now closed. What's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you very much. Looking welcome. forward to having it open. The next item on the agenda is the uh, continuation of the Edgeway Mobile Park um, application for a license to operate for the year 2013. Um, do you remember this has been continued for a while um, based on potential buyers for this property? Uh, my understanding is the town manager has spoken to the attorney representing the potential buyer. They are very close to an agreement. They have asked this board to continue again for one more week so that they can close out this agreement um, and, um, and come to an agreement on, on purchasing the park. So uh, what is the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Frawley. I'd make a motion that we continue it for one week, but absolutely we have the hearing next week. Absolutely. We have a motion. Do I have a second? second? We have a second. second. Discussion? Mr. Crowley. We've just heard rumblings. I mean, did right, of, right of first refusal. Is, is the tenants have any? The tenants? To, towards that. They, yes. They, can, so they have a right to meet or exceed any offer presented, yes. So sometime then this week they will be provided with? If they reach an agreement, okay. yes. Yep. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair? Mr. Frog. I think it's important to keep in mind that our next meeting will be on April 1st, and that's the fourth month of the year that this park will be operating without a license, and it's time to stop. Thank you. I agree. We've been going on a long time under the guy, under the hope. We, that, we started this discussion in December. Yes, we did. But again, my, my opinion hasn't changed. The only way 
the fixes we need to this park to comply with the special permit that was granted years ago is with the new owner. Uh, so they can come in, fix the road, fix the drainage, fix the septic, and fix the buffer zone. Uh, that's the only way that's all going to get happened. Uh, if we could, you know, if we find the current owner, that isn't going to do anything. If we deny the license, it could hinder the negotiations, and I don't want to do that. That's me, one member of the board. Any other board member have any comments? No. Mr. Vaughn? Just on a comment you made, I just want to highlight something for you. Because I've been thinking about this over the last four weeks. Essentially, it seems that asking for a license right now is sort of the prior owner saying, look, I don't qualify for the license. I haven't met the conditions of a license. But give me a license so that I can sell the place. Because without the license, it's worth a whole lot less. And that, to me, is sort of a dangerous precedent to set. Sort of, give me my license, I'm selling. We could have that happen with the Tispaquin campground, where she says, give me my licenses or give me my permits, and I'm selling, so give them to me. I can get a better price. You start to border up. You start to border up in my mind on sort of putting aside the legal requirements, which I've noticed this board doesn't always like to do. They like to try and stick with what the law is. Um, in order to gain some sort of an econo economic advantage for someone else, for some third party. And while I understood that Attorney Burke was standing here saying, look, this will help my client get this ball rolling so that we can fix all the things we need for the license, Curiously, you've got the tenants who disagree. And that's why if there's going to be a, there's going to be a, a sale, it seems to me it's an as-is, where-is, which would lower the price, which ultimately would lower the cost to the new buyers, which would end up having less cost being transferred to these people. Because all of that capital expenditure and all of that money spent on buying the park is ultimately going to come back around to them asking you for rent increases. I, I, I disagree but, with that. Okay. The only one I think that would qualify for a capital improvement would be the improvement to the septic system. All the other okay. things are, are needed to comply with the special permit that was granted years ago for the park. That Those costs should never be passed on and to that's going to, is that going to be, absolutely is not, that, I mean, I'm not going to no, no, remember I understand. this. Well, that's, that's part of the point. You're not going to be here. Um, you're not, uh, Mr. Spataro will not be here. We don't know who will be taking the seats. And unless that's sort of written in somewhere, so they have that understanding at the outset, um, because we've discussed this all before on, you know, in front of a supermarket or here or there, various of us have discussed this before, that the, the capital improvements that should have been done already shouldn't be transferred back over to these people. Absolutely and I agree not. with you completely. I'm just afraid that if you give them a license or you set the precedent of, yeah, I don't have a license. I'm selling, so give me one. You start to border on something very, very dangerous, and, you know, anybody can come up and say that to you. I've heard arguments like that come from that side of the table to me when I've been representing a client where I've been saying exactly the same thing. So I just, it, it, it was a thought I wanted you folks to keep in mind um, when it comes down to it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll respond to that first. I mean, my thought regarding that is every every situation is different. Every situation has a different set of facts. And clearly it's up to this board to make that tough decision to do what is right, not only for the tenants, well, primarily the tenants in this case. I, I, I think it, it is in the best interest of the tenants for this park to be sold. Uh, waiting one more week to make the decision is not going to <coughs> make or break anybody. I mean, will it, will it cost... Uh, Having a license now, would it mean that they could get more for the park? Probably. It probably means that they could sell the park, as opposed to not being able to sell the park without a license. Well, can you, if you know that the park is out of compliance with what it needs to be with a license, are you legally allowed to give it a license when you know it's out of, out of compliance? Right. Am I allowed to go out there and say to somebody, um, yeah, you're violating the law, but so that you can sell it, I'll turn my head the other way and say, here's a license, which is a representation to the world that they qualify. 
You know, I, I don't know the answer. I don't to that know question. if council I, would. I think we'll run that by town council. Yeah, that, that but, to but me I would think be. I, personally, I'm comfortable doing this. Um, uh, but, but I've been comfortable I, doing I, other things that are not according to the law. I, I understand. That's why right, at least. Because it, I think it's the right thing to do. At least ask town council. We will do um, that. Because that to me is sort of, the, that was sort of the odd question that was being begged. You took the license away because you didn't qualify. Oh, you're selling here. We'll give you the license. We know you don't qualify, but so you can get a better price and get somebody in here, we'll let you break the law. Eee. I get a little worried about that. Well, Mr. Bond. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Go right Mr. McKinney. Yes, sir. Please remember that the... The initial removal of the license had nothing to do with directly the infractions. Okay. It was the fact that a person didn't respond appropriately to a town official, stamped their little feet, and then the Board of Selectmen said, well, you don't want to talk to my town official, we'll pull your license. So, so it, it didn't get to the point of we're pulling your license because of you took down my trees, you did this, you did that. It was, you threw my inspector out, Okay. we pulled your license. Okay, so that's when the license was originally pulled. Do they, that was back in... I, that's 94 or something like that. No, that was, that was 2004. 2004. And then... But do it, they qualify for the do, license? Do they, I, I, are they I operating under the qualifications? Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna I'm sorry, through you, you Mr. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I'm going to let you finish. You're going to let me finish? I, I'm going to let you finish this time. You're being very benevolent. I'm, I'm a nice guy here. In my mind? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to. I don't want to jeopardize anything. If they have us, there's, Mr. Rulo has a very valid point. Okay. In order to get this park, these people taken care of, mm -hmm. it's going to take some money. Yes. It's going to have to have somebody come in there with some money. Yep. For whatever reason, I have not liked the way the present attorney has handled this situation. As far as I'm concerned, there should have been a forensic audit done back to the day when the I person who owned the, owned the park yes. passed away and then there should have been a financial accounting of every single cent. Well, we've all been through this a yep. oh, yep. hundred times. So what it's going to take is somebody to walk up there with a lot of money and fix the park. I don't want to jeopardize that. Okay. Much the same as I believe Mr. Rulo has the pretty the much stated. The primary reason for pulling the license is a health issue failed septic system. Okay. The fact that they violated the special permit is not a reason is not a reason to deny the license. That's my understanding. There has to be the health issue is the failed septic system. Okay. The owner has been working with us to try to fix that septic system. They're trying to get a plan designed and approved by the DEP. They're still working with the DEP. They can't go in there and fix it until they have an approved plan. I mean, Gene, jump in here anytime when I'm kind of running off a cliff. So <laughs> they're in a position where they can't fix it. What they're doing is trying to address it, working with the town, working with the DEP to develop a plan to fix that. But the so, issue, but the but issue I, exists. So and based on that, the fact that they're working, I think we have uh, a legitimate reason to grant them the license. They're okay, working would, on it to fix it. I would just ask the yes, town council. We will do that. that Gene, did I say anything that was, well, I always say things that are stupid, but anything that was inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Hi, Gene. How are you? Welcome. Good evening. Um, Gene Spaulding with the health department. I, my understanding is that they have had preliminary discussions with DEP regarding upgrading of the septic system and what will be required. Um, the last I heard from the attorney, but I had not seen anything official in writing, is that it would be con considered an aggregate and the two parks would have to have a joint system based upon the flow rates. Mm -hmm. I was looking at giving them, and I offered that as a preliminary uh, upgrade approval for them to go forward on an emergency repair status with a preliminary plan that they had provided us so that it would augment uh, coordination and, and construction of that septic system much sooner. Um, and that's why this board went to great lengths, I might say, to hurry up and get a, the approval for the municipal water agreement. And, and I appreciated that. Unfortunately, it, it seems that this past attorney didn't follow through with that, with the efforts that you put into it and with what we had put into 
to smooth the path for them to do this quickly didn't occur. So at this point, we're stalled. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Chip. Mr. Frawley, thank you, Jim. Since we're asking uh, town council, or, are we asking town council or special council these questions? Town council. All right. Can we ask uh, town council if, uh, if it's possible to sell a park without a license? I'm just asking that we ask the town council if, sure. for his opinion. I, I think we can ask town council thank anything. You. All right. Uh, Welcome back, Charlie. <laughs> We're in a discussion on the uh, Edgeway Mobile Park, mm -hmm. park uh, license renewal. Mm -hmm. We've gone a little uh, off topic since the motion was to move it to next week. But to, to since then. To continue. <laughs> since then, we've been, uh, Mr. Bond got up and raised an issue about uh, the fact that if they are out of compliance, basically they don't have a uh, working, they have a sector system that's in failure. It's working, but it's in technical failure, is my understanding. Uh, we couldn't uh, grant a license anyway. Uh, my response to that was, they're working with us. They don't have a plan, an approved plan yet, so they can't actually go in there and fix the problem. Uh, yeah. So based on the fact that they're working with us, pending plan, it was my opinion that we could grant them a license if we saw fit that the violations of the special permit would not have, was not a reason to withhold the license. Uh, that was, again, my opinion. Uh, and then the board talked about, well, maybe we ought to run this by town council to make sure we're on firm ground here to grant them a license, even though their septic system is not fixed. And then Mr. Frowley wanted to add an additional question um, to town council if, uh, if, in fact, they could sell the park without a license. I, sure. I mean, you know, you can ask him whatever you want to ask him. <laughs> Mr. Spital. Uh, Charlie was up, was out while Gene was up there. You had the question that uh, they uh, couldn't move forward because of DEP, but what I heard uh, Gene say was that there was an emergency opportunity that she was granting them to make repairs, and uh, it was tied to the municipal water. She worked it on the municipal water side and uh, the uh, attorney representing the park didn't move forward with uh, hooking up with the plan for repair. Gene, was that plan for repair tied to the water? So, so, it, 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 so is Al's statement correct that it's sitting with DEP or was it a function of the park uh, uh, trustee in the form of the attorney not moving forward? My opinion, it was the trustee. It was what? It was the trustee. So it's not sitting with the DEP is not the hold up. It's the but isn't there an alternative? That was one alternative to uh, run a separate water supply in there. Another one would be what if they did, if they chose not regardless to do that, of what they do. If, if they what, chose regardless not of what they do, they have to have that municipal water supply. Really? The plans that I have currently, whether they what upgrade, if they change the plans? I, at this point, I. I don't know how they would change the plans that, that would allow them to keep the wells the way they are because the location of those wells, unless they change the total location of where that septic is going, which I, I don't see where it would go uh, other than in that site. But the wells are right there in that area that they need for that septic. So unless they do new protests elsewhere, which I don't know where that would be. Um, Thank you. Okay, so it's not with a, it's not a holdup by DEP, it's a holdup by the uh, trustee moving forward. DEP did drag for a year right. and a half now regarding the whole aggregate legal issue. And again, that's why, you know, the preliminary plan that I had provided for if DEP came down with that aggregate decision, the existing plan that I had could be converted to accommodate for the wastewater treatment plant that would be required for combining the two parts. But forward progress could be made today. It's not being held up by DEP. It would be the trustee Correct. taking action. Correct. The motion before us is to continue this hearing until March 11. You want to speak to that? Sorry, April 1st. April 1st. April 1st. I'm sorry, April 1st. Yeah, Thank April you. 1st. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Brian Jim Running, and I received several emails and text messages while I was sitting in the back. And the comment that was raised was, tread lightly on this one because the one right after this, um, the words arbitrary and capricious start coming into mind. 
and that's the one thing we don't want to have coming up in the next one, is if you issue a license because a septic system doesn't work next week, where are we this week? That was what I got for you. This is a motion to continue. I know. Yeah. We're not it's not a motion to deny a license. It's a motion, it's a motion to, continue. to continue the decision until April 1st. My, my comment on that, Mr. Chair, would be between now and April 1st, are they going to design a septic system, create the septic system, install a septic system? Of course system? not, Brian. What kind of a... But that's what the... Way off base here. Well, because you're putting something off till April 1st. Okay, we're not software. discussing it. Okay, so you're putting it off to April 1st. So that, that the question is, is what could be perceived as what could change between now and April 1st? You have a, you have a new buyer. Okay, that was... Okay. So, so the new buyer, that's... It's going to fix it. You know, this board on this particular issue, forget the issue coming up. We've got one issue before us right now. I don't think we're acting uh, in an arbitrary and capricious manner. We've got, we've got a potential buyer here who's willing to work with us to get this problem fixed, which has not been the case no. in, in, in the matter you mentioned before. Has not been the case. Mr. That's Chairman? a significant difference in my mind. And, and one in which I am perfectly comfortable with continuing this and having the discussion next week as to what the status of the license is. I'm comfortable doing that, but clearly I'm one member of five here. Um, again, any other discussion on continuing this hearing until April 1st? What, uh, what time do you want to do it on April 1st? Uh, same time, 7.30. 7 okay. Same place. Miss it for the world. The move. This is a motion on continuing. Okay, I just had a question for you, Al. Sure. Mr. Ruler, Louisa Brown, 162 Wesley. Just uh, say it to me again how you felt, Mr. Ruler. You you feel at the beginning. I want to make sure I understand this in my mind. Well, you feel comfortable giving a license to a new buyer to a buyer. Do I feel I'm not in, there's no, nothing no, wait, before wait, me this beginning. evening to talk about a new license. No, it could be What I'm comfortable doing yeah. is doing everything within the authority of this board to allow this possible transaction to move forward. In one week we've been told that they would they're very close and in a one week there could be a potential buyer to this new park. Right, but I thought at the beginning you said something about the license that you felt to give them the license. Oh, to, to give, to give right. this current owner a license? Right. Because he's working with us to fit. The only issue to deny his license is a failed septic system. That's the only one. The other issues before this park, the buffer zone, the drainage issue, fixing yeah. the road, those are all issues related to a special building permit which were never complied with. The health issue is a reason a field septic system is a reason to deny the license, in my mind. So the fact that this current trustee has been working with us to develop a plan, come up with a solution for mm -hmm. the septic system, is a reason, in my mind, to allow him to continue on that path. Okay. Okay? That's my reasoning. You got four other members here. They can express and their hopefully opinion, too. You and, and, and in my read, the only way. The only way this is going to be fixed is if you have a new owner of that park. There is no money that the trustee has to fix any of this. So if he doesn't sell that park, you're going to be in the same situation from now until, until he sells the asset, until he sells it to someone else who can, who can fix it. Maybe the owners? What owner? The current owner? No. There's no money. No, maybe the people who live there. Well, then you're perfectly willing to buy the park. And then we'll be having this discussion with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman? Right. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Can McKinnon. we move the question, please? Yes. Thank We're you. We're moving the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. One against, 4-4. Four, four. We will continue until April 1st. Thank you.
The next item on the agenda is a hearing to discuss the issuance of a license for Tispaquin Family Campground. I will read. Um, I'll wait till the room clears and then we'll get started. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to wait till the room clears and then I'll read the hearing notice. Thank you. It's, a, it's been a hell of a 60 days. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda, as I've just mentioned, is the uh, hearing to discuss the issuance of an annual license for Tispaquin Family Campground. I'll, he I'll read the notice. A public hearing will be held in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 10 Nickerson Ave, Middleborough, Mass., on Monday, March 25, 2013, at 740, for the purpose of discussing the request made by Ralph and Barbara Holton doing business as Tispaquin Family Campground for a family-type campground permit for property located at 68 Purchase Street, Middleborough, Mass. Anyone desiring to be heard on this matter should appear at the time and place designated. Hearing is now open. Good evening, Ms. Holton. Hi. My name is Barbara Holton. I live at 68 Purchase Street. <laughs> Just one minute. Hey, John, can you do me a favor? Can you tell them to uh, take it either out in the front lobby or out of the building? <laughs> Please. Okay. We're just going to quiet it down. Okay. I believe <clears throat> the power and expense this town has illustrated to its residents totally supports my belief that this is not an issue of protecting the public health or even enforcing the rules as that they only apply to me. I have constantly brought to this board and others example, ample documents to support a license that was issued previously with no restrictions. <coughs> to be issued again, and instead of dealing with the issue, you choose to shuffle it off to others who do not have the expertise to fairly and equally determine what exactly needs to be done. The health officer contends that you are willing to work with the campground, but that is not true. In my packet, I submitted a letter from the town's attorney stating the town has no interest in meeting with the campground. Again tonight, I bring information in the hopes to resolve almost 30 years of unfair treatment. This information consists of a letter from the health officer, and on page two, it has a license that was previously approved for 113 pending water supply regulations. Once a license is issued in accordance with 140, Massachusetts General Laws 140, Section 32B, it now becomes the DEP's call as to whether or not the water and sewer are sanitary. In 2002, after reporting the campground to DEP, the DEP determined that no expansion had occurred and they rescinded an order brought on by a complaint made by the town. In this, <clears throat> in the, in this town, licenses are issued in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 32B. I have provided you with a copy of this and I underlined the procedure after the license is granted. It then goes 
to the DEP <coughs> and they have the jurisdiction to inspect the premises so licensed to determine that the water supply and the works of the dis <coughs> disposition of sewerage of such premises are sanitary. These documents in themselves should be sufficient for a license to be issued. I also would like to note that improvements have been made over the last year to further expedite this process. Experts who deal with these issues have submitted fixes and proposals that totally will and have put this campground in compliance with Title V regulations that apply to campgrounds in existence from before 1995. A judge in 2010 did issue a judgment that this, <clears throat> that this board's denial of the license was supported by two instances of which he cited in his findings. One was gray water discharge, which has been addressed, and the other that the present sec septic system has insufficient design flow to service more than 100 camping units. This has also been addressed. The new tight tank, as well as the existing systems and the calculations and expertise of a qualified engineer have corrected this. In the judge's decision, he did not address grandfathering of the systems or what would make the campground compliant. So in my best effort to resolve this and move on, I spent thousands of dollars on experts and work that is completed in order to obtain a permit. Please don't allow one person to orchestrate this entire project. Let the experts be heard. Now, Thank you. You mentioned improvements. I, I, I recently read the minutes of the uh, zoning zoning board that you went before, uh, maybe it was a couple weeks ago. I went before the zoning board. And, and, and their comment was, although you've placed, I guess you've installed the tight tank, you didn't uh, use any of the local boards, the Board of Health, to get to inspect that tight tank to make sure that it met the requirements uh, to uh, to support a campground with 113 sites. Is that true? No. the The tight tank when when you put in a tight tank, it is um, designed by an engineer who is qualified to do the job, it's sort of like called a controlled install. And the engineer is the supervisor of this job. He, I in turn get an installer, which I did. The installer goes to the Board of Health and gets a permit. The permit is issued, which it was, by the Board of Health, and she the health department can have say in the job or will go inspect the job and Catherine Hassett did come down and she did an inspection to make sure that the sand and so forth was in the tank. Whatever she did, she came down and made an inspection. She didn't see any problem with it. She didn't have to sign off on the permit because the, en the engineer's stamp, and I did talk to the engineer, he said his stamp supersedes a signature from the Board of Health in a controlled install like that. Then, if you notice, I did on your little um, thing there, he then, after the job is complete, he has to send um, a compliance application to the DEP to tell them that the job is done and it is in compliance 
of what for a tight tank. The plan is for for a tight tank. For well, this particular job is it was in the um, permit as a dump station and holding tank. So it is a dump station holding tank. That's so, so you need to bring the units there or, or they, they dumped it with a little portable unit and right. go over to the dump and dump it into, dump the, it into the... And then you have to pump the tight tank it out. It has an alarm on it, yes. It has and a you bring it to Middleborough's wastewater treatment plant. Excuse, you bring that's it, right. And it goes to the wastewater treatment plant. Does sort this address... Like Great I'm going to let Jean... port a party okay. is what it Thank is. Thank you. Hey, Jean, does this tight tank now address all your concerns regarding the septic system for this park? No, it does not. Okay, well, please Let explain. me clarify that this is not just a tight tank. It is considered an industrial wastewater holding tank, and it is part of Title V that requires any fixed waste within a campground be deposited here and not in their septic system. As I have stated over and over again every single year and in all the correspondence, that this is one component of the Title V requirements, that the campground still has to, if they want to increase their capacity, still has to put in the standard Title V septic system. If this were strictly a tight tank, that would require a variance procedure, and it is only considered approvable if there is no other options for repair, and you certainly could not increase capacity under any circumstances with a tight tank. This is an industrial wastewater holding tank. It's a different issue when it's required. The other campgrounds have put them in. Um, it's been required of them. We still have to go forward with the septic system upgrade to bring it up to the 100 and whatever capacity so, right. that she is requesting. And as far as the sign off and completion of that industrial wastewater holding tank, I do have the engineers sign off and the installers sign off, and the only thing I'm waiting now for is for the final electrical inspection and approval by the electrical inspector. Okay. And, and, and I, I know I'm being a blockhead about this, but in the past we denied this because the septic system wasn't adequate to handle the, the sewerage for the 113 units. And that's still it, the case. And, and I it's think still you all So have they need a separate septic system on site to handle the sewage coming out of these units. That's correct. Are there individual septic lines going to each unit? No, there's not. There's not. So every unit is dumped in, all the septic is supposed to be dumped into this tight tank now. And of course you have your bath houses and whatnot. Excuse me? And you have the bath houses. And the bath, well. right. And so what has to happen is this sewage in the tight tank has to go into their own septic system to be treated on site? No. 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 So no. I'm this is going to be pumped. This is industrial wastewater holding tank. You will have to have a pumper come in, pump it out when it gets to a certain level, and take it to the wastewater okay. treatment plant. So the septic systems are still for the on site septic repairs or anything else, the bathhouses and all that is supposed to service the campground itself in the full capacity of what the number of camping units are being applied for. Okay. Any board member have any questions? Um, does the, yeah, McMahon. Mr. McKenna. The bathhouses, do they feed into the septic system or do they feed into the tight tank? They do not feed into the tight tank, no. They feed into the septic system. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how is the septic system fed um, byproducts from the trailers or the campers if they're not connected indirectly? I don't know how they're fed as it is now. I don't know. No, think about it this way. The waste coming out of the trailers goes into the industrial Wastewater holding tank. Wastewater holding tank. Because that, that waste is treated within the units. The, the bathhouses go to the septic system in the septic field. That's what still needs to be up there. Okay. And that's, that's what you were saying is 
This is only part of the Title V. So she needs a septic system to handle the bathhouses. Right. And it, and it has to be enough to handle the potential yeah. of 113 sites using those bathhouses. Is that, is that what we're saying? Yes. DEP Title V says for whatever number of units you have to have system capacity. <coughs> it has I mean, been the courts passed. have already ruled. No. We, we have been through court forever, and we've got a final ruling now I that says that. So it just let me finish. And the courts have said that the town is absolutely correct, that the septic system is not adequate, and that you are required to upgrade or get down to what is it? How many units? 50, 60, I don't know what the number is, I don't remember. But it's a significantly lower than 113. The courts have said that. We've, we've been in court now for 10 years, and we finally got a final and answer. And I told you what the court and said. They said there were two findings, and they said that the end, uh, you want to get to, you, get to the you can use that mic over there, that mic's that. Barbara, if you want to use that mic, no. you can. My engineer addressed the capacity of my septic tanks in Title V. Now, an upgrade is completely different than installing a new septic system for all these bathrooms. And that is what Jean is looking for. Jean is looking for me to install all new septic systems. I have three bathhouses there. They will, according to Title V, accommodate the septic that needs to be accommodated since before 1995, when they were all built before 1995. If you notice, I submitted a Title V that was altered by the Board of Health here. Okay? I, I think it was changed by your engineer who no, no, find, my engineer did, did not, no, no, my engineer doesn't do Title Fives. My Bay State Sewer did the Title Fives. They did the Title Fives, and Bay State Sewer cannot change a Title V after it's done. It says right on the top of the document, this is an official document and may not be altered in any way. It seems to me I've read the, the, the documents attached to this hearing tonight, and in there, in that, document, it said that it was in failure, that your, your D-box was, 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 was above the, the outflow line. And so that's that's technical so failure of Title V. Hold, a hold on a minute. There were two Title Vs. They were both dated the same day. One was a pass, one was a fail. How does that happen? How do you have two Title Vs? I don't, I'm going to let Gina, Gina you're going to let Gene explain that? I'd like to hear Gene explain that. Well, now, Mrs. Holton keeps Thank accusing you. me Bad of alter, altering these Title V reports. And in fact, when I questioned her Title V inspector regarding the report, because the content of the report indicated that there was different information than what the re front page, he said it was cr that was true, and he had made an error, and he resubmitted the title page with the corrected. And if you look at the title page, it has his signature, not mine. So I did not alter the report. Thank you, Jean. I mean, the, the, the issue be, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna summarize this for a minute. The issue before this board is the same issue that's been before this board for years. That's right. Is the septic system adequate to well, handle 113 according sites? To my and the court experts, has said according no. According to my expert. Let, let, let me finish. The court has said no. Our health agent has said no. Right. And so I what, you what makes case. you think this board is gonna change its mind? Well, guess what? because I have experts that say yes. And this is an expert, and I gave this to you last year about what needed to be done at the campground to get 113 sites by a registered engineer who was qualified to make that call, okay? He said that I needed to put in the tight tank, which is, I, I knew that from the very beginning because that is the law for every campground in this state. So why did you wait 15 years to do that? Well, it? you know what? I, wa I w We were in court, remember? We were in court. I remember. Yeah. And it's cost me a lot of money, just like it's cost this town. And 
you people are so willing to work with people. You're not willing to work with me because if you were willing to work with me, you would take into consideration what engineers have said. I have an issue with Gene because things have not gone well. When I bring something forward to Jean, she automatically says, no, you can't. I, I brought the application for the tight tank to her to get a permit, and she said, no, that is not my job to issue that permit. That permit needs to be issued by, title, by, by the DEP. I wrote down to DEP, I talked to Brett Rowe, and I told him what she said, and he said, no, she's wrong. So you people think that Jean is not wrong. Sometimes she is, okay? She, an upgrade <coughs> is totally different from a complete over new system. And when you have existing systems, unless they're in failure, just like you talked about in the previous hearing, you have a system in failure. It has to be upgraded. My system is not in failure, and the Title V was done in October of 2011. I got the revised Title V in the mail, in my mailbox with a stamp on it with no postmark on that stamp in May of 2012. That was seven months later. Now is that how, how you take care of Title Fives when they come into your office? You just leave them laying around for seven months and then you call up Bay State Sewer and say, oh, by the way, seven months later, I have a Title V from Tispaquin that doesn't really look right. Well, this protocol for a past Title V that you want to fail, you don't just call up the sewer company and say, I want this failed. You do the Title V over. I did it over. Just, I, had an, I hired another company to come in and do the Title V so there would be no question as to whether it passed or it failed. He changed more than just the title page on that Title V. There's five changes in, inside the document, not just the title page. Like she said, he, oh, we made a mistake on the, you don't make a mistake like that if you are a qualified Title V person. You don't make a mistake. Oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to change it to fail, and I'll send you the thickest. You know. I do not believe that Jean changed that report. I just don't believe no, it. No, she didn't change the report. She called, like she said, she called. And, the, and, and they must have agreed with her to change it. No. So, look, <laughs> I, you know the what? issue, in my mind, the issue is the same as it has been. That's not how since, you change since, it, this protocol to changing a Title V. Does you don't just board, call the guy and tell him to change it. Thank you. Does any board member have any other questions? I'm going to declare the hearing closed. What's the pleasure of the board? Pending the, because of the Title V failures. I don't have, have any Title V Just a moment. This is now the board discussion. This is up to the board. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. McKinnon. Because of the... Title V inspection that I'm looking at right here that says it's a fair, the system's in failure. I make, I make a motion to deny the permit for 113 units. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. The license is denied. Well, Thank you. Good. So maybe I should sell the place and then the new owner can get a license. Okay then. We are now going to review the annual town meeting warrant. 
articles. The first one is warrant 25. Is this the one? This is our zoning article. Hi, Ruth. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Great. Good. How are you? <laughs> Hopefully much shorter and sweeter. <laughs> Whatever it takes. I developed this zoning article at the request of the building inspector. Um, it is a minor tweak of existing wording um, relating to non-conforming single and two-family structures when they um, are to be reconstructed, extended, changed, or altered. Uh, under section 3.3.5, it was intended that if the, uh, the, if the lot was non-conforming for frontage or area reasons, that the building inspector would be allowed to issue a building permit and a uh, property owner would not need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals if the structure was going to be reconstructed, extended, changed, or altered, and it completely complied with all the setbacks, even though the lot was undersized. And additionally, if the building, if the lot was undersized and the structure did not meet the setbacks for one of the years, one or more of the areas, if the alteration or change or reconstruction made it comply or did not make it more non-conforming, i.e. the addition complied, then the building inspector also would be able to issue a building permit for single and two-family structures. When the zoning bylaw was written, the first paragraph of 3.3.5 included all four, I think it's four parameters, four parameters, and the last paragraph did, but the three subsections only said alteration, so it didn't actually make sense. It should have said reconstruction, extension, change, or alteration. So what we're doing is, for the three subsections, adding that language back in, which means that people will be able just to go to the building inspector for one of these permits and not to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And down in section 3.3.7, which is reconstruction after catastrophe or demolition, this is for things that are other than single and two family. So we're clarifying that by saying, except as provided in section 3.3.5 above, blah, 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 blah. So we're fixing 3.3.5, and then we're putting that language referring back to it in 3.3.7. Okay, and this all has to do when a building is damaged during a storm? A storm, catastrophe, a fire, or if it's just a, you know, it, it's a it's building that apart. you want to take down and put a new one, as long as you comply, the building inspector is able to allow you to do that. Okay. Now, is this the one where we need to refer this back to the planning board for a public hearing? Every zoning article has to be So before this back. board can vote to support or not support the article, we just need to forward it back to the planning board. So that's the motion you're looking for tonight, to send this back to the planning board for a public hearing. That and also for you to support or not support it, but you don't have to do that tonight. Okay. Well, you're running out. Will you, will you have enough time? Well, we, to you, advertise it? Or you have to advertise? automatically send it to the planning board for any zoning article, even right. if you don't support it, because when we send stuff up to the attorney general, we have to give all the dates, the dates we gave it to you, the date you sent it back for hearing. It's very particular. But you uh, recommending favorable and non-favorable action is, is separate from the referral for the hearing. We can do it all tonight, though. There's no reason. We can yeah, do it all tonight. Mr. Chairman? Mr. McKinney. Just so, I, just so I'm clear. So if, if somebody had a, they wanted a, if their house was termite ridden, they wanted to tear it down and rebuild the exact same footprint? It could be the same footprint or they could move the, they could move the house, but as long as it complied, then the building inspector could issue that permit. But if it was the same footprint, he could issue, he could issue the permit. Yes. Without there wouldn't be any right. even though it was out of. Even though compliance. the lot was non-conforming. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Spatano. Motion to support this article and send it back to the. Second. Motion and a second. 
Any other discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Frawley. Do we want to add that we support it? Or the yeah, the motion. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess it, it is. Included. Yeah, all right. Second. So, okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. We support the article and we'll be following it back to your planning board. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I understand you acted affirmatively on the Jim Bragger request tonight? Yes, we did. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next warrant, the next article is Article 18. I'll read it. To see if the town will vote to appropriate reserve from the Community Preservation Fund annual revenue in the amount recommended by the Community Preservation Committee for Committee Administration Expenses, Debt Service, Community Preservation Projects, and other expenses in fiscal year 2014, with each item to be considered a separate appropriation. Appropriations for administrative expenses for 2014, 13,000. Reserves for historic preservation, 26,000. Reserve for community housing project, 26,000. Reserve for open space reserve, 26,000. And estimated revenues for budget reserve, 151,000. So that's the unidentified. The rest of the statutory requirements of the percentage of revenue that you're going to be raising in 2014? Well, actually, the, um, the three buckets, the Historic Reserve, the Community Housing Reserve, and the Open Space Reserve, that 26000 includes is what we project being the statutory requirement of 10%. Okay. So um, we're figuring that the assessments um, based on the 1% surcharge after the first $100,000 assessment on real estate tax is going to be just over $200,000 okay. in fiscal year 14. Um, this past year, we received $56,000 in a state match from the state of Massachusetts on our collections. Um, so we totaled $256,000 um, in our coffers, which was a great return on in our initial investment. Um, so based on that, based on what the state CPC committee projects we will receive in 2014, we estimated a little bit conservatively they're expecting a similar match, um, but we always like to underestimate. It's better to underestimate than overestimate, so we don't have to go back and make adjustments to our 10% buckets. Um, so based on that, we chose, um, we're allowed to allocate 5% or reserve 5% for an administrative budget up, a up to a maximum of 5%. So that's why we picked um, 13,000. Um, we, we estimated globally, we, we projected um, 242,000 in total between collections and state match. And then we just did the math from there, the 10% mm -hmm. in each bucket and 5% for the administrative fees. So how much do you have left in the CPA fund for future projects? Um, right, well, so this 151,000 will be what we collected okay. from FY14. Right, what um, FY14? right now we have, well, we have, we have 256,000 when we close the books in the year, fiscal year 2012. So we're still waiting for the fiscal year 2013 assessments to come through. Again, um, they just put out a projected estimate for a match. They said it will be about 24%, I think. Um, and then on top of that, whatever's left in the state trust fund. Um, when I spoke to Stuart at the CPA, he said he's looking at maybe potentially all in total, we might be receiving a 40% match. Um, again, I don't want to be held to that, um, but right now, Stuart said we're looking at about a 24% match. We would kind of be on par with what we did last year, so maybe in the ballpark of 56,000, depending on what our assessment's coming at. Um, and then we just kind of use that to project into 2014, and hopefully we'll be getting a bigger match than 24% if the economy's better and the housing market picks up and housing values um, increase but we figured would be conservative, and we, we've been right on track so far, so we're pretty pleased with this estimate. Thank you. Any other board members have any questions? Mr. Frawley. And uh, you're Mo Quinn Franco? Yes, sorry. <laughs> and so we got $56,000 from the state last year? We did, just and $56,200. Uh, just because we en enrolled in the Community Preservation Act? Correct. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. That's and we got up to, that was at 24%? I believe it was 24. It might have been 22 percent last year. Yeah, it was in that. It was in that ballpark. I could get you a number. Yes, they say they 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 projected. They always put out a projection, and Stewart said um, for FY13 he's projecting about a 24 percent match, and that's not including what the trust fund if there's a trust fund left over. Beautiful. Thank you. 
Any other board member? No. I want to take a motion. Motion to support the uh, amendment, the article. Second. I have a motion and a second to support the article. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it, it's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next one is Article 19. And this is uh, to see if the town will vote to appropriate 3500 from the historic resources reserve of the Community Preservation Fund to fund the planning phase of the Middleborough Historic Historical Museum's project for the preservation of historic town records and artifacts contained in two buildings by conducting an assessment of the existing conditions of the buildings, determining their condition and suitability for renovations, and to prepare a scope of work and construction cost estimate, said funds to be expended under the direction of the Community Preservation Committee or act anything hereon. Hi. Okay, how are you? <laughs> So this is a recommendation to uh, to use thirty five hundred dollars of this to uh, to uh, try to preserve the artifacts and, and records in, uh, in these two historical buildings on Jackson Street. Right. The um, the um, historical association initially came to us with a proposal with a request for about forty three thousand dollars <throat> and a total fifty nine thousand dollar project and. Um, at that time, they wanted to um, install some uh, HVAC system in the two main museum buildings and also deal with the windows in those buildings. And after we met with them and, and uh, reviewed their uh, proposal, um, we were concerned about whether they had, they, you know, they have a limited amount of money mm -hmm. to spend. And so we were concerned that they um, didn't have the money to spend to do a study ahead of time and be sure that what they were proposing to do was the right thing for those, not only for the two buildings, which are historic buildings themselves, but for the artifacts within. Mm -hmm. You have things there, textiles, paintings, and so forth, that require a certain type of climate control and so uh, they are now planning to hire a consultant who will advise them exactly on what they need to do in terms of heat and air conditioning to um, protect those items. Thank you. Do board members have any other questions? What's the pleasure of the board? Motion, motion. to approve, motion to support uh, article number 19. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Ayes have, ayes have it. We'll be supporting Article 19. Article 20, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $5,000 from the Historic Resources Reserve of the Community Preservation Fund to refurbish and preserve an 1890 Woodbury and Harris historic pipe organ located at the Unitarian Universal Church and to record a preservation restriction on said organ, said funds to be expended under the direction of the Community Preservation Act or act anything thereon. Um, um, there, there was lots of, this hit the paper pretty hard. Yeah. And, 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 and just to reiterate, this is allowed within the state statute regarding yes, how we spend these absolutely. funds, even though it's housed in a church. Absolutely, um, because it's not. It has nothing to do with the fact that this is a church. It has to do with the fact that this is a historic pipe organ um, that happens to be in a church. Um, it's uh, believed to be one of about eight uh, pipe organs of its kind that have not been converted to electric or whatever. And, um, and as some, some, one of the, uh, Jeff Stevens, one of the proponents for this project pointed out, um, we, we recently lost a historic pipe organ when, the, um, when we had the fire at Central Congregational Church. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was something that you know, everybody feels really badly about and sort of points up the significance of these instruments. There aren't that many of them left. 
and it, it is an appropriate way to spend Community Preservation Act money um, and it's also not the total project um, I believe they are asking for five thousand they're asking for a portion of the project the five thousand dollars is I think it's uh, just over half of, of the total amount um, yeah, it's a ten thousand dollar project. Oh, actually, we we have voted to reduce the amount to four thousand dollars that uh, the town would contribute after this article was written. So we will be making a motion to reduce that number to four, and um, and the and so the the uh, total project cost is ten thousand dollars. Am I right about that, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The total project's ten thousand dollars, so we would only be the town would only be funding four thousand of it. And what does the preservation restriction do? You said you're going to place a preservation well, restriction yeah, on this organ. We we feel very strongly that even with small amounts, of, when we're talking about small amounts of money, that this is taxpayers' money and we need to protect it. And so any project, probably any project that we approve. Um, that involves uh, something that could be altered or removed or whatever, um, converted, uh, we're going to have a, some kind of language in, the, in our agreement with the proponents so that in this case the organ could not, you know, next summer the, the society okay. couldn't decide to convert the thing to electric or replace it with, you know, uh, brass band, or, you know, they could, whatever. Could, could, could they do it if they returned the, the town's portion? Well, of they would. Yeah, they would yeah. have to return the money. Okay. Right. So it's like a lien. Yeah, it's like a lien, but it's in an agreement. It's not officially recorded on. A, well, there's no deed on the. Order. Now, it, 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 for bigger it's part projects, of the contract. yeah, for bigger projects that involve buildings, or um, certainly pieces of land, we will be requiring um, deeded <coughs> restrictions. Yeah. So, just so I could ask, so it, along with it, so if, if, if there's kind of a deal, you get the 4,000, you have to come up with the other six? Yeah. They have to. I mean, yeah. it's like, okay. Right. And they've already, that's, have they that's shown another, you? That's another caveat that if they, did, if they don't do the project, they return, they, they would have to back. return the money. Okay. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Mr. Frawley? Mr. Spitalo. Mr. Spitalo. Mr. Spitalo. Mr. Spitalo. Can I ask a question first? Sure. Um, so if they decide to sell it, they got to give us the four grand back? To sell the church? So the organ. Can, can you sell the organ? Oh, to sell the, the organ? Yeah. Um, I don't know how you would remove a pipe organ from a building. But I know next to nothing <laughs> about pipe organs. It's, all, it's actually, the pipes are actually part of the, the, the building. building almost. Like I only ask because there's a story in Boston where they're selling something from Paul Revere that's part of the church. Yeah. But they need the funds, so they're selling it. There's it would be it would be really difficult to sell a pipe organ because you would have to like dismantle the building practically to to do that. Right. Just checking. That answered your question. That was perfect. Okay. Um, Mr. J Mr. Jr. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Go sure you can. What was the reasoning behind you reducing the figure from five thousand to four thousand? Just curious. Um, because it was a percentage thing. Uh, even though it's a small amount of money, we felt that we, uh, under normal circumstances, we shouldn't be, unless it's a real tiny amount, which we, we have done 100% of projects, but uh, in general, we want to be less than half involved in um, invested in these things. Mrs. Patel. Um, you wanted to ask a question about it. You want another question? Go right ahead. I haven't asked my first about question. <laughs> oh. About Seems this. Like you've been talking all night. I know. <laughs> maybe that was me. What's well, about ahead. this? Well, I don't know. Maybe I read this wrong. But who owns the organ? Who physically owns the? Is the owner of the organ? Is the it the church? Unitarian Universalist Society. Yes. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? It's a pleasure to vote. Motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. It's unanimous. We'll be supporting Article 20. 20. Article 21. To see if the town will vote to appropriate $20,000 from the Community Housing Resources Reserve of the Community Preservation Fund to fund a portion of the Middleborough Housing Authority's Damascus Apartments window project for the purpose of improving building of improving housing conditions for 10 elderly housing units in two buildings. C funds, said funds to be expended under the direction of the Community Preservation Committee, committee or at anything on. You can read the next one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, Joe yes. Ruthwitz is a member of the CPC, the committee, and also the director of the Housing Authority. So, well, welcome. Question. Um, the 20000 for this project will be to replace the windows on Sprout Street only. Um, there's 10 units there. Uh, this is part of a, a bigger project that the town is working on with um, Jane from the Community Development Office and doing street repairs, sidewalk repairs. We're also going to be doing um, a gas, underground gas lines. So we're only going to dig up the street and sidewalks once. I think the total project is about 200000 so we're only looking for 20000 20000 Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Spatel? Motion to support. Article 21. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed? Ayes have it. We will be supporting Article 21. You want to read 22 for me, Al? Sure. Thank you. Article 22. To fund a uh, portion of the Shoe Shop Place Affordable Housing Project, sponsored by the Community Preservation Committee, Article 22, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $40,000 from the Community Housing Resource Reserve of the Community Preservation Fund to fund a portion of the Shoe Shop Place Affordable Housing Project located at 151 Perth Street for the purpose of, purposes, for the purpose of constructing 24 affordable housing units, said funds to be expended on the, under the direction of the Community Preservation Committee or any act thereon, sponsored by the Community Preservation Committee. Thank you. Um, this one is, um, this is an unusual um, application in that it, it's a, we, are, we would be funding a tiny portion of, um, of this project, an $8 million project, but our participation could help the, uh, or is going to help the um, applicants uh, obtain a million dollars in grant money from the state. Um, I don't know if you all know the building where Cartney Road Street. probably do. It's that Pierce real Street. big factory, Just one of the last uh, f mill buildings in town. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a project sort of like what's going on at Star Mill. It's, um, <coughs> it will become, not only will it uh, be listed on the National Register and restored as a historic building, um, but it will uh, become affordable housing, um, very nice housing, and 24 units. And um, as I said, it's an $8 million project. This, this building, um, I don't know if you remember, but there have been two, two proposals for this building, both affordable housing. In both cases, the developers weren't able to get the financing they needed. And so that building has been sitting there. And um, not only is it a significant building historically, but it's, as you can imagine, um, the neighbors, I'm sure, aren't happy with the fact that it's becoming a giant eyesore in their neighborhood. And, um, and it's the nice neighborhood. Uh, so a couple of selectmen live in there. One selectman lives in the vicinity, just one of them. Um, so this, we, if we come up with $40,000, then um, it will be the community investment portion of a grant 
that um, has been rejected twice, but um, stands a pretty good chance, we think, and Charlie can say more to this, because he was, he's been involved in uh, more recent discussions about it. But this, prod, this application stands a pretty good chance of being approved this time. It's one of those things where you have to get in line for the funding, and sooner or later your turn comes around. It's very competitive funding. But the um, local investment piece is very important to it. And this, this investing in this kind of a private development is authorized under the housing provision of CPA? Yep, it, it comes as under... As it's affordable this, housing? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's the whole idea. Right. The CPA, one of the main functions of CPA is to, is to provide affordable. affordable housing. And it also comes under the, the historic preservation aspect of Mr. Chairman? the law. Mr. McKinnon. Right. It, so there'll be no cash outlay unless the project goes forward. Right. So unless they get the grant. Unless they get the grant. The grant. The project might go forward. If the project went forward without the grant, there would be no, there would be no was, money from the town. So it's tied, but tied to the grant. It's, it's specifically tied to the grant. Okay. All right. Yeah, I did discuss this with the um, uh, person at DHCD who oversees this grant program. And, and having local funds committed to these projects helps get them funded. Uh, and that's the piece that we haven't had up until now, and that's why I think having this this request is important, because I think it'll just put us in a much better position to get the grant going forward, and, and that building really needs rehabilitation as well. Okay, thank you. Mr. Spatero. Jane, if uh, hypothetically the uh, folks that own the hospital came forward, would you be able to fund something like that in the same way? Like that, we talked if about they, ice oils. You know, the, the old St. Luke's Hospital? Yeah. I don't see how, because uh, not unless it was going to be affordable housing. Okay, they had to. They had um, which it's not. Right, it's, just rehab. Just rehab is not. No, it's not. Rehab. It's not a historic building at this point because it's been gutted, and uh, I'm not sure that it's actually going to stay there. But yeah, I, I make a motion to support Article 22. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all um, those in. Yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, I have a business question. Um, besides making the building more visible, more appeasing to the eye, more appealing to the eye, which is what's happening here, what else does the town get from it? If the builder builds the building, gets his grant, makes a profit, do we get some of that money back? Or is it no. just. No, what we get is we get. Um, first of all, we get affordable housing. We get credit for all those units, I believe. We do, yeah. They're, they're rentals, so they get yeah. So we get we get credit for all 24 units. That goes towards our quota of affordable housing. We're, we're required to work toward 10% of our housing stock being affordable housing. We also get a national register building in a national register district, um, which enhances. I would think enhances certainly the value of property in the area, enhances the downtown as a whole, and um, you know, it's a it's a benefit to the town in, in a number of ways. That's all I got. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else, Mr. Quell? Just a question to, to Charlie. Uh, through you, Charlie. Where are we stand right now with our quota? Are we close? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a moving target then, you know, you get close and then every 10 years they um, <coughs> reassess things in, in terms of, you know, numbers of units and then you tend to fall back. So uh, I don't know exactly where the number is. Um, you, uh, you approve things, you get credit, they don't get billed, you lose the number. It, yeah. um, you know. But you get credit for working toward it. You get, yeah, you get credit to work, to work toward it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? Does uh, Josephine have a uh, more accurate uh, assessment of where we are? It's about 50%. Excuse me, I didn't hear. 50% is a quarter. Can you come to the microphone? Because mm -hmm. people won't be able to hear you. 
So, so if we're at fifty percent, that means we're at about five percent, right? Right. Yeah. Because the the requirement is ten percent. Right. Yeah. So we're yeah. I th I think we're about halfway there. I think that's my best guess as well. Now, but Mr. Chairman, go right ahead. Uh, we still have the challenge that the state doesn't like to uh, uh, aggregate all the different types of housing units that you have, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, we have, we probably have more than 10%, but yeah. they don't let you count uh, Archer Court along with. No, Archer, Archer Court's counted. Uh, Archer Court counts, but the, the, some of the. All, all the housing authority properties count. Right. But any uh, housing that could be. Uh, the mobile the, homes don't count. Um, if your house is assessed or, or appraised at less than the affordable limit, um, it doesn't count. It's only if you have a deed restriction right. on the property. So I mean, we're very affordable as a community, but it doesn't. Yeah, we don't get credit for it. And, and, and the number of communities in this area have made that argument for years, but to no avail, uh, because the way the ACD looks at it is those things could change uh, without a deed restriction, you know, they could be made from you know, affordable to become unaffordable, and you know there's no way of controlling that. So that's why we don't get credit for it, even though we we do have very affordable housing in this community. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Spital. Just one other question: um, towns that have uh, snob zoning and some of those other types of things, how do they get away with not having 10 percent or even working towards it? We're working. You're working aggressively to try to hit that uh, milestone, but uh, does this? I don't know. I mean, we have more control over our 40B uh, projects because we're working towards that 10% uh, number. Un under certain circumstances, you you may, um, but again, it's a it's a constantly moving target, and um, you know. Not that I care what the other towns do, but I'm just curious why. They're not as aggressive. Any, any fear for that? They maybe they don't have as much open land as we do to build more housing. Okay. Um, well, one thing that the Housing Authority has been fighting is we have 154 Section 8 vouchers that are not included in the inventory. And I don't understand why they are not. They're all the same requirements that we have with the state program. Um, but the state says that they're federal and they can't, they're vouchers so it's with a private landlord. They're still affordable housing, so they should be counted. And I, I know the housing authority groups are working to fight that. I mean, 154, I mean, we'll probably be, you know, at about 70, 75% if we get those included. And we are working to try and get some more vouchers. And, and does the, uh, as it does our uh, legislative, can our legislative delegation, are they supporting the housing? Uh, right now they're supporting housing authorities. That's their main priority. Yeah. Um, there isn't any legislation on that. Um, but just trying to keep the housing authorities local is the biggest. If you get over that hurdle and you do get uh, that, bring that something will forward, be something that we'll be working on. Yeah. Okay, so we had a motion before us to support the $40,000 uh, uh, for an affordable housing project at the, uh, the old shoe shop place on Pier Street. All those, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. We'll be supporting Article 22. The last one before us this evening is Article 24 which is to adopt a wetlands protection bylaw. Um, town manager passed this, uh, some information this evening. Our town council reviewed this, this proposed bylaw and came up with, I don't know, 40, mm -hmm. a lot of comments, over 40 comments regarding this bylaw. Uh, and uh, none of them were dealt with or included in the recommended bylaw. Is, is that? I'll let Mr. Ventresco speak for the commission. Go right ahead. Good evening. Good yes. evening. Stephen Ventresca, Middleborough Conservation Commission. Um, yes, that is correct. We did have town council look at the bylaw. This is the MACC template, if you will, that other towns have adopted throughout the Commonwealth. Um, I did bring this template before you um, earlier in the year, or maybe last year in the fall. Um, we did discuss it a little bit 
Um, at that time, we did say that town council was going to look at it after they reviewed it. And looking at the town council's comments, the commission felt that the MACC uh, template was sufficient and that the comments that town council had were, um, as far as making, were minor revisions to the MACC template. A couple of the comments that uh, the commission felt were uh, questioning whether these, the bylaws actually would apply to the commission allowing us to uh, put forth regulations if the bylaws were adopted. So there seems to be, in town council's mind, a conflict with, in his mind, in my opinion, his mind about can we have the bylaw and then therefore put regulations forth through the bylaw. He seems to think we can't do it. The commission thinks that we can do it. So that's why we are submitting it uh, as is the template that we received from MACC. Question, Chairman. Mr. McKinnon, if you thought I was hysterical over the dumping sewage, dumping paint into the drains, I was, I'm vehement over this one. Because while I don't want to throw anything in the drains, I might want to cut a tree down in my yard. But because that tree is within 100 feet of a wetland, I can't do that. Not true. So it's right here, unless I get a permit from you to do that. So you could come into the commission and say, I'd like to cut, I'm doing work within the buffer. I'd like to know, you know, are there any other provisions that, I, that need to happen if I want to cut the tree down? We'll have the agent go out, take a look. The agent will come back with a response to say, not a problem, they can cut the tree down, or... And, and you will do that for free? free. The agent will, do, yeah, the agent, if you come in, you well, a permit well I'm sorry, if you have to come in, you have to submit a, what's called an RDA if you want to do it that way. So but if I want to cut so a tree down on my land correct. that I own, that I pay my taxes on, that the, the, me and the bank deal with every month on, correct. I've got to come to you, to the commission, to have somebody come out, I have to file a fee, put a fee in, yeah. to have somebody come out and say, oh yeah, you can cut that tree or you can trim this brush. So, so here's the, well, so here's the catch-22. So we have the Wetland Protection Act, which is put upon the commission or the, you know, the Commonwealth. We have to protect that. And so the commissions were set up to protect the Wetland Protection Act, which affords a 100-foot buffer to a wetland and other resource areas. So we have this balance that we need to do you know, what can and can't happen. And so I think the commission, this commission compared to other commissions that I've had experience with, has been fairly flexible in allowing people to do, you know, what they want to do on, on their land within reason. So we do have to look at our resources. We do have to protect our water. We do have to protect, like you said, people from dumping down the drain. And interestingly enough, before I came, I got my MG&E bill, and here it is. Solutions to stormwater pollution. So discussing different things that pollute our waterways. Lawn and garden, fertilizers, hazardous waste, uh, pet waste, believe it or not, that has to be picked up. So things that other, this is from the Board of Health, so that the Board of Health even recognizes that we need to do. So this is in addition to that. I understand your concerns about, you know, extra fees and things like that. But again, the catch-22 that the commission was given from this board was that, um, you know, that groups in town need to start to sort of get their own fees and get their own house in order, if you will, and get more monies coming into their, into their coffers through their own devices instead of coming back to the town. So we have this give and take that we need to do, and unfortunately, it does require more fees. And so the last time that I was here in front of the, the board, um, I know you had two or three items that you were reinvesting in the town as far as equipment for the fire department or for the police or wh whatever it was. Um, things that cost money, things that we all have to, to put forth. I wish it was all for free and that we you know, could pay minimal taxes and just get more and newer things. Unfortunately, it's impossible in this world. We need to, to pay more, we need to contribute more. And so, for the commission, okay. this is a good way to contribute. This is how we feel is a way to, that we can contribute by doing the bylaws that does have additional fees included in them. This is how we, this is the only way we can see how to do it to continue our mission of the Wetland Protection Act protection. Mr. Quill. Um, well, along the lines of what Selectman McKinnon said, 
he's already paying a tax on that tree. In order for him to cut it down, he almost has to pay another one. So now we're getting into you double taxing the same product here. You look at it that way. I just don't see how you can get around that. And my second question would be, if McKinnon goes ahead and fires up his chainsaw without getting that permit, what are the consequences he could face if Cassidy or somebody's driving by, slams the brakes on, starts taking pictures? I mean, the, the, there would probably be an enforcement order brought out, but that doesn't mean that you're getting fined necessarily. But he could. But he could be. Okay. It doesn't automatically trigger a fine. No, but it could. But it could. Absolutely. I just can't get around the fact that that tree's firmly planted on a piece of property that's already being mm -hmm. taxed. Right. And believe me, I understand, sir. You know, the, the, I would never, ever, ever throw anything into that wetland. And I'm 99% of the people in this town wouldn't do it. And I know that I know that there is a percentage. I mean, you know, there is a Rockland Industries come to mind. Uh, and, but and that was uh, yeah. that was that wasn't you know, that wasn't Ben in his house or me in my house or you know, any one of these guys in their houses. You know, that was a business, that was a different type of operation. Uh, I would never destroy a wetland, but I I also don't like those little thorny thicket sitting there and I might want to do something about that but I got to get Patricia come down to say it's okay for me to cut them out that just seems it seems very intrusive you know yeah I, I think I don't think the bylaw will if you wanted to for instance cut the tree down or do some pruning you do have protection under the act to do limited landscaping within a buffer I mean it, it's there so you don't necessarily have to go and get the permit or, or file the fee. You can have that discussion with the agent and say, this is what I want to do. And if the agent thinks it's, it's something that is bigger in scope than maybe what you had in mind, then yes, maybe you need to come and file the permit. But I think, but I think like with any good government, you need to have that discussion before. Mr. Spatel, um, I'm not in support of this only for the fact that the town uh, attorney uh, Told her what we needed to correct, and it's not correct. It's what? It's not corrected. You know, we had those 40 points that right. have not been acted upon. So I, I'm not trying to cut off anybody else's discussion, but I make a motion of non support for Article uh, 24. We have a motion for non support. We have a second. 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 We have a second. We can continue the discussion. Do you have any other comments, Mr. Scott? No, sir. No? Mr. Kelly, I Let me just make a comment, and I, 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 I tried to say this in the email I sent back to, to Ron and Steve, and, and um, Town Council really is our legal advisor when it comes to bylaws, uh, and uh, no one's saying that Town Council is always right, and, and you can argue your points with them, but you at least have to argue the points with them. You can't just ignore them uh, and say we're going to take a bylaw at the town meeting, and uh, because it was... In point of fact, uh, you've got a non-criminal disposition provision in this bylaw that you just can't have. You know, you don't have the authority to have. It's possible, and, and, and that's why the MACC puts it in the template, because it's a, it's a recognizable method for enforcing a bylaw like this. But there's no, no authorization that you can have this. So by not engaging with counsel over his comments, you, you basically inserted things here that you you know you know you, you just can't even have. So I, you know I think it's important you know when and you know it, you know we, 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 we deal with it all the time uh, you know uh, if there's something in the comment that that doesn't ring true you you ring up counsel and you have a discussion with them and see if you can you know resolve it and if you can't you know you uh, you have to deal with it. Um, but, you know, that wasn't done in this case. Anything else? Mr. Strong? Sure. No, I, I, no I, I thought you had your hand up. I'm not asking you for, I mean, you can... No, I, I, I have a couple comments. Um, I think the Wetland, Wetlands Protection Act is a, uh, is a godsend to communities like Middlebar. Uh, I think this bylaw is definitely something that we need to have in this town. Because while Mr. McKinnon may not cut that tree down in the 100 foot buffer zone. There's plenty of people, plenty of people who will go through and cut every living thing down 
and then fill in the pond. Kick the salamanders and the uh, and the frogs out of there, and put a playground there. And they won't, and then they'll wonder why their water's bad. So, yes, we certainly need not because you're going to do anything bad, but because there's plenty of people who are going to do bad things to the wetlands, and they need to be protected. And we have to pay for it. That's the problem. Like, I don't want to pay for prisons, but we have to pay for them because people do bad things and they got to go somewhere. But, that being said, it's tough to get over 40 points from the town council. I, uh, I think you guys should at least have a discussion with them. Okay. So, um, I guess for us, I think, I was thinking maybe we could um, incorporate the comments and then and then resubmit for April 1st, but I think you, this board needs to vote on that before that happens, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, we have to vote on so, final okay. war on April 1st, so I think right. it gets you enough okay. time. Okay, that's fine. So then, um, then I'd like to withdraw this article for spring town meeting, and then we'll reapply in the fall, if that's the case. That's so fine. I think that's what we'll do, if that's, uh, if that's all right with you. I, I just have one question. I don't want to continue this conversation, but there's, the state statute protecting wetlands today that we operate under, correct? Yes, the Wetlands so Protection why, Act. So why do we need a local bylaw? Uh, why do we need a local bylaw? Well, it's possible to afford further protection to the resource areas if we so choose. I know you have a 25-foot no-touch WRPD. We could do different types so of protections. So this would be more restrictive? Not as written right now, but if we wanted to in the future, the commission could, yes. Okay, well, I, I have the same problem. I mean, we have town council. He submitted uh, valid comments, and uh, the commission chose to ignore them. No excuse. you got to go back. Uh, so I'm in favor of supporting this article, which is non-support. Um, well, you really talked to the, I don't even know what you're saying right now. <laughs> we have a motion before us, non-support of this Well, no, uh, well, well what Steve's I'm, offering like to, is just to withdraw it. I'm just going to withdraw To go I'm back, to spend the time, talk thought, to council. I thought you had an article for non-support. I do. That's another list. Oh, but Mr. Hmm? He wants to withdraw and have us not take a vote. Oh, fine. <laughs> Right. That, that is the request, right? You withdraw it, we don't take a vote. You come so back. it's not going to be on this year's one. Okay. You can make that call for your board? Yes. I'll be more than happy to work with you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. on between the boards yep. to make sure that we can get something and uh, present it for fall time meeting if you'd like. Yep. Yeah. Just so you know that I'm one of the vice chairs, and so, and as you know, Ron is the chair, and he said this is this is my uh, this is my project, so I can do whatever I want to do. Just, you know. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, that's my understanding too. Um, so you'll strike it completely. Hmm? You'll strike it completely off the wall. We'll just pull it out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the town manager's report. Um, just had a couple of items for you uh, in the. Um, the report that uh, were council was written to the building commissioner uh, and actually to the Tracy's uh, letting them know that we will be there uh, on the 16th to assess their compliance with uh, the court order uh, and, uh, and uh, a memo on the um, Midwar Public Schools District Emergency Response Team I thought it was useful for you to know about and then uh, we had a couple of very useful and uh, in, um, important meetings this week uh, on the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we met with the, the EPA permit writer uh, uh, on Thursday who came out and uh, toured the plant and talked to us about the, uh, the draft permit and the, the parameters are very much in line with what we are expecting and what we are preparing for uh, uh, in terms of the upgrade. So that was good news. No, no surprises there so far. but. Right now, that's a it's a preliminary draft, and then we'll get a draft, and then we'll get a final. So, you know, in, in my mind, until we get that final, we're not going to do any design work. We're going to wait for that final permit, you know, before we we start spending spending our money. Um, Charlie, is there any idea how long it'll take to get that final it, permit? It, probably in about six months um, before it's it's absolutely final. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think we'll. Uh, within the permit, we'll have a schedule for, for doing the work. Uh, we won't be forced to sign a consent order or anything like that. So it'll be uh, accommodated in that way. Um, 
And we also had a, um, a meeting with the, uh, the DEP about funding, uh, because uh, you know, we were, you know, now that we're getting to this point, we're looking at, well, how we're going to finance this, this project. Uh, we know there's a 2% loan. We know there's the possibility of a 0% loan. Uh, certainly a 0% loan would be what we want. Uh, and uh, had a very uh, constructive meeting with the DEP um, and got some follow-up information from them and uh, will need to complete a comprehensive wastewater management plan in order to be eligible for that uh, financing, but it's, it's got the potential to save us just millions of dollars in interest costs uh, over the life of this project. So, uh, you know, we're looking at having to spend between one hundred fifty and two hundred thousand dollars to do this plan, we'll be able to do that as we wait for this permit to be issued, and then we'll be in a position to, to apply for the, the zero percent financing. And they haven't given out that many of these loans, so we're, we're getting in early uh, on that financing, and, and I think we stand a very good shot at getting it. And that'll be a huge boom for us in terms of you know, paying for this upgrade. So, what do we have to do to get this? Well, it's, it's called a Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan. And, and we've done a lot of work on this. Uh, Weston and Sampson did a lot of work for us um, about seven or eight years ago uh, toward a partial plan. So we've got a lot of data that we can, you know, use to put this together. Uh, so, you know, we, the other meeting which I, I, I neglected to mention was we did do interviews of the four uh, companies that have come in to be our design engineer on this plan, and Mr. Rulo uh, was represented uh, on that committee, and uh, we're doing some, uh, and we and four very good firms, uh, and we'll be giving you a recommendation on the, the ordering of the finalists next week. We're doing uh, some background checking now, uh, and we'll be able to add that to their scope of services. It's, you know, the first task will be produce this plan for us, you know, get it uh, submitted to the DEP so we can be eligible for this financing. This comprehensive plan, is it a plan that determines how you maintain uh, the nutrient levels and, and the wastewater that comes out the other end? It's, it's how really you're how, how you're going to deal it? with your wastewater needs over the, the course of the next, you know, so many years. You know, so, okay. and, and we've, you know, we've done that, you know, by establishing the sewer district and, you know, building the plant and, you know, um, we, we know where we want to you know, put our wastewater assets. We know that, you know, we have no intention of making this a, something, you know, in the entire town. We focused on our industrial area, areas. We focused on our downtown. Uh, and that's where, you know, I, I think we're comfortable, you know, providing those services. We, you know, we don't have, you know, and, and everywhere else, you, you know, we, we operate with septic systems. You know, it, it, it don't, it's, a, it's a sound strategy. Uh, in fact, what they, what they don't want is they don't want you to be building this upgraded plant and then all of a sudden creating sprawl, you know, and, and because you're able to um, build, um, build more intensively on a piece of land that you go ahead and do that uh, as opposed to if you just had them on, on septic systems. So, and that's been our strategy all along. Right? So, so what they're looking for in the plan is exactly how we've operated all these years. All right. So the reverse of it, they, if we build it, they will come. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can build it, but they can't come. Right. <laughs> but we don't want to build something that invites everybody. That, that's right. exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. We have to deal with the nutrient issue. That's important. That, that's what gets you the funding because you're you're you're, you're improving the you know um, the, the wastewater that's coming out of your system and you're reducing the, the amount of nutrients. That's what they want. But you're not then also adding more capacity or, or more intensive building because you're doing this work. Thank you. Uh, next item is correspondence. We'll start with Mr. McKinnon. You always start with me. I don't always. You always do. I actually, no, I don't think I have anything. No. Nope. Well, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Quill? Uh, no. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Crowley? I'm happy to see that the assessor's office is now open on Wednesdays. That's it. Thank you. All set. The chair's all set. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. We will not be returning to open session. 
discussing this matter would, would place the town's negotiation position in jeopardy. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. McKinnon. Yes. Mr. Quell. Yes. Chair votes yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Spatel. Yes, sir. We are now in executive session. Thank you for coming this evening.